Brujeria, the Spanish-speaking band that kicks out of uh, kicks asses out of international ways, and uh, you know my Spanish is so bad that I just try to, you know, figure out what to do, do with these guys or uh, guy and gal to be exact. Uh, ¿Qué Hola, pasa? ¿qué pasa? Ah, pues mucho aquí. Hay mucho aquí en Helsinki. A ver qué pasa, nomás. Pues por aquí pasa lo que quiera. Ah. Lo que cae, güey. Lo que cae. Todo bien. And this was already too much Spanish for my, my little poor skills. So, uh, Brujeria is first time in, in Finland, am I yeah, correct? Yeah, see. Sí. And as you, can, as you can see, this is not exactly uh, Mexican weather, but you managed to uh, pull out a really, really strong gig. What is your secret? Uh, the secret is todo en español, all Spanish. Y love, love to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> todo love. Yeah, you you had a lots of lots of uh, emotions too on the stage. Uh, I noticed a really cool uh, "fuck Trump" star, uh, the, the text on on your. Uh, but you really give a strong message, and that is already obvious for fans of the band. But once again, to like make uh, uh, kind of like uh, underline the point, what is all the wrong with Trump? Uh, he hates Mexicans, and Mexico. There's a lot of Mexicans in the United States. It's, it's a lot. And he just comes out talking shit and hate, and, and it's hard to find a Mexican that likes him. So, you know, we do our songs that sound how much we love him. You know, our song titled "Viva Presidente Trump," like you know, "Long Live Trump." So, uh, love, it's love. We give love. What is your opinion about this asshole? Well, he has no idea of what he's doing, <laughs> and uh, we hope he gets uh, killed soon. <laughs> Oops! Straight talk. Oops! Yo no dije eso. I didn't say that. You know, we love, we love Trump. Love, love. Yeah, but should should Mexico uh, build a wall to keep the Americans away? Yeah, soon it'll be that with Trump keeps going the way he is. That's what's going to happen. The wall's going to keep the Americans out. Leave him over there because he's ruining the country. He made everybody hate everybody again. So, says back like 50 years. So, what would happen if uh, Trump got killed? What what would Be different. You know, that, that'd be too much. We don't want him unless unless he gets hung for treason, like the, the government kills him. But that's different. I mean, But, like in general. Okay, let's let's just say he gets removed. What would be better for Mexico? Who would come there? Mexico, not, nothing. It's hard to help Mexico right now. <laughs> But uh, Trump being there is like uh, he just hates the Mexicans and he's causing problems we don't need in Mexico. So building a wall, it's like it's just a waste of money. And then he wants Mexico to pay for it. So it's like when you want war, it's like, is that what you want? It's like, you know, half the army, half the U.S. army is Mexican. So it's like, it's a crazy, it's a crazy, it's just crazy. You don't want to be there right now, believe me. You, stay here. Stay here. Don't go there. I can imagine that. And But considering that you had a li really long break between the albums, I mean, the last one that came out last year, And the previous ones. So was a Trump in kind of a blessing in disguise, in uh, in a sense that he gives a lot of inspiration to write songs. Yeah, he gives a lot of inspiration, and uh, that made because you know we were touring, having fun. We never toured before, so we started touring. You know, after all the records, and then uh, we were starting to write a new record, but we were like no hurry. But then Trump comes, and, and we have to get this thing going, and and because this guy's you know set, taking back everything, is sending us back 50 years. So uh, we got to start over again. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing. But you Make have... me work. Make me work. So you have a kind of a, at least had a pretty international lineup, and you have had your lineup changes. How do Brujeria uh, kind of like uh, stay intact with all the people changing? Well, they're always they're all like members of the band. So if some guy can't make it, somebody else does. Like interchangeable. They're they're all like still in the band. We just use different guys. You know, different days. Like last week, uh, Shane couldn't go, so we had, uh, you know, somebody, uh, somebody fill in, uh, embrujado on bass. And so different members interchange, and so we always have our shows. So you never know who you're gonna get. You never know who you're gonna get. Yeah, I was surprised to see you on stage, but you perform like a gave a kick to the ass on the on the uh, perform. Uh, are you on a regular basis or just randomly? Um, so I'm touring a few gigs for them. Um, When we can make it, I can go and travel with them. You know, we have. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. <laughs> you never know who you're gonna get. Yeah. 
Like Brujeri has female uh, power. Yeah, yeah. We, we just try to like um, uh, make the woman make her we stronger. Gotta, we, gotta, we can't be like shown as women haters, yeah. so we have to have a girl on there. So how do the songs get born? I mean, you since you are split up in different places, how is composing and writing lyrics and all that? Well, uh, the lyrics are like all. Uh, a lot of times are like true stories, you know, like a corrido, like Mexican folk music is like stories about drug dealing and all these the true stories that they put in songs. It's illegal now in Mexico. And uh, ours is the same thing. We just put them metal to metal music. And the metal guys we got in the band, they they, they write, they, they shit riffs out, they shit songs out, and we put lyrics to them in Spanish and it works pretty good. Yeah, it's a re really rare combo because, I mean, like, um, I don't know why, maybe you do, but Mexicans don't make that much metal. I know a few bands obviously, but what is the secret why Latin people don't like well, play metal music well, that much? What happens is down in Mexico is uh, they, they start trying to sing in English. They, they do metal bands and sing in English. They don't know English. They just, you know, it's Spanish is their language. So, you know, we always started Brujeria saying, here's an example of Spanish. You know, we do it in Spanish, We're not trying to make money in English. Because once you do it in English and you don't speak English, you, it's, it doesn't work. <laughs> It doesn't work, so we try to put it in Spanish and show them how to work. But um, it might be like we're like one of the only bands that really could do it in Spanish. I don't know. It's hard to get good bands that uh, in, from Mexico in metal. There's a couple. There's a couple, but not. There's a lot of metal bands, but there's a couple that are good. What about uh, the language? I mean, how how much it affects your fan base? I mean, in the United States alone, there are. Uh, millions and millions of Spanish-speaking people, and let alone uh, the South America and obviously Spain and other countries where Spanish is the language. Do you get a lot of a lot of fans from those countries? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the music is so good that it doesn't matter if they. It's like the same in English. When we don't speak English, if the music is good, then we'll we'll like it. And it's the opposite way. If it's in Spanish and they don't understand, they still like it because the music is good. But uh, we never really. It's always written for like if you live on the border, Mexican United States. It's it, it's always written like a Spanglish for that area. So we never. We never intended it to get to South America. I got to South America and got big, but it's always our focus is always border. So is Brujeria like the equivalent in music con compo uh, compared to uh, Tex-Mex? <laughs> yeah, it could be a little. Well, it's more like a like a Mexican, like a, uh, uh, instead of Tex-Mex, it's Mex-Tex. Okay. It would be like from more from that side looking at, but uh, it's border music. It's like it's meant for the for the border, like you know, crossing the border songs and all that, how to do it, where to do it, things like that. So that's what we focus on. But it gets you know, it's spread, you know, over the years it's spread, and you know, it's it's amazing. I, I'm I'm still you know, you know, shocked at how big it got, and uh, it's good. Right? We like we like doing it. We have fun. We have fun on stage. We have fun touring, doing the records. It's always been fun. That's that's the big component that we need to do it. It makes it work. Since you all have this, these kind of a cartel scarves on your face, how important the role uh, having this kind of a semi um, kind of like uh, individuality and uh, you know like hiding your face, how important that is to you? Well it's always been since day one we got to cover because what we sing about is not going to be a lot of people aren't going to be happy with it, including a lot of government people. So we always have to hide our face so we can say whatever we want. And, uh, you know, that's always been the main goal. So, of course, there's members that come out saying, I'm in the band, you know. You know, that, that, that we, that's frowned upon, you know. So I never take my mask off. So I'm the only guy that people really don't know, no other band. You know, it's hard to find out who I really am. So mask is always on. You, you also sent kind of kind of like a pro drugs or at least pro marijuana message on the stage how serious you are about it well yeah all those the, the marijuana thing in the nine mid 90s we were pushing it hard because it was illegal then now it's legal anywhere in the united like the united states anywhere you go it's pretty much legal so it worked <laughs> but we, we in mexico you couldn't sing about drugs or marijuana so we started doing our mexican disco songs about marijuana and putting them out in the huge and just hoping that marijuana turns legal because it's not as bad. Over there, it was like a big crime. Now it's like, you know, no big deal. But in, in the States, it's legal in a lot of states. So it worked. I, I think, you know, it's helped. I, I will tell you a really stupid anecdote. 
in Finland it was actually uh, voted whether uh, marijuana should be legal or not. And when the uh, votes uh, came into split decision, yeah. do you know how they decided to flip a coin? And it ended bad for people who like marijuana. No so we should, as a, we should have put out something and finished, you know, change the language for a couple songs, put them out here. <laughs> Yeah, that was in the seven, honestly, 70s, but anyway, it's like... Well, uh, 70s, before my time. <laughs> I'm not that old. You don't look that old either. <laughs> yeah, I am, though. <laughs> what about uh, the... If, if drugs, I mean, like marijuana, are, are legal, um, will will you just, like, erase them from their song list? Like, okay, we're done with it, move to the next chapter? Next drug, you mean? No, uh, we do, we already do that. We already have our, all, you know, cocaine songs, you know, crystal meth songs. Yeah, we do all the drugs. <laughs> No, we don't, we don't, you know, there's no discrimination against drugs. We do them all. So if I would, I, I was meant to ask you uh, this uh, on the early part of the interview, but if I would have to answer you in my worst Spanish ever, plata o plomo. Plata o plomo? Uh, <laughs> oh, plata o plomo? I would say, uh, I would say plata. It's easier. Plata? Yeah, no, it's funner. You have plata. Plomo is it's not good news. The promo's not good news. No one wants promo. Promo, no. No. So, what's in uh, for Brujeria in the near or even distant future? What what kind of plans you have after now that album has been out a few months and you're touring? What are you gonna do next? We're writing a history book of Trump. Trump songs that are, uh, you know, instructions on how to fight Trump. <laughs> You had that uh, seven-inch EP that was released only in the U.S., right? Oh, uh, it got out. It's it's everywhere. Uh, vinyl, it got out everywhere. Uh, but now there's Trump 2 coming. We just wrote it this week. Uh, is it we also this week? Trump 2, Amari Consar. It's gonna be a seven-inch also. Seven-inch. Uh, what about new album then? Are you gonna be a more active uh, now that yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. <laughs> are. Now that we're in the studio writing every chance we get, so we got half an album already, so it'll be out quick. Will there be a uh, new new members, or are you gonna keep the current lineup? Uh, there's there's always there's always new members that there's a lot of members that want to be in Brujeria, a lot of band, a lot of guys that want to be in Brujeria. It's hard to get everybody in. We try to get as many as we can, and and uh, it's 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 been good. It's fun. I'm telling you, the band has a lot of fun, and everybody who's been in it or been you know knows you know been part of it, they always want to you know. Do play in Brujeria and stuff. So we try to get them in. There's different. You'll see different guys up there on stage here and there. So the lineup on, on live will be uh, different as well. Yeah, every time the, you, there's going to be some shows in August, you'll see different lineup. We right. done, last week was a different lineup. Last week Madrid was a different lineup. What about uh, more live elements? I was surprised to see like uh, like the C or no. The, no, no, no. The... We try to teach Spanish, teach Spanish, you know, with our songs and helping you know with the signs. But are, are you also going to incorporate more uh, kind of live elements, so to speak? Uh, yeah, yeah, we like to dance the Mexican, you know, the Mexican song dance, you know, the classic uh, dances, and if we can, there's some songs. What about mar mar mariachi cover song? Yeah, mariachi's a little too old for me. You know, if I was trying to entertain my mom or grandma, then, you know, a little mariachi, but, yeah, we, we just a little touch of it, maybe, but... Costume-wise? Uh, Costume-wise? No, it's not a costume, this is the, this is the way I dress. I just put on a mask and that's it. I'm ready to go. All right. Uh, what kind of uh, greetings you want to send out for the fans of the band or and uh, opposers of Trump? What do you want to say? <laughs> Trump, no. Brujeria, si. Así es. You? Uh, to all the greñudos that always listen to Brujeria and the uh, Ejército de Brujeria, greetings to all of them. Not just their boyfriends. <laughs> so, if you want to learn Spanish and don't know what's the better way to do, check out these motherfuckers' cool lyrics, take a dictionary or whatever tool you use and get some real badass lyrics and get yourself a view uh, in politics of today. I thank you very much for this interview. I thank you very much for the, the chance to see you on live. Learning Spanish is better for you than knowing Spanish. Estilo Brujería, that's the one, that's the Spanish you need. <laughs> and all I can say is, si, sí, señor. And this is all from Rauta right now. We can uh, say goodbye, adios to these um, fine uh, Mexican people and see you next time. Así es. 
Thank you very much. Okay. This was a real pleasure.